A parameter query is a flexible query that prompts the user for additional criteria, instead of having them come over in the design view and type in the criteria here. For example, if I have quite a few customers to filter for in my database, if I didn't use the parameter query, then every time I'd have to come into the design view, enter it here in the criteria field for the customer name, run it, then enter the next one, type over it, and then run it, and so on. But with the parameter query, I can create a prompt that says enter in the customer name, and it will display the results, of course, once they type in the name. Not only that, but I can give you the shortcut keys, so instead of flashing in between view and run again to rerun the query, just use the shortcut keys and it'll automatically rerun the parameter query. Well, let me show you. So for the customer name, let's go ahead and put in a parameter query that prompts them to type in the criteria. So let's go ahead and do open square brackets. That's the beginning of the parameter. And then just go ahead and type in the statement. So enter a customer name and then close square bracket. That's it. Hit the tab key to make sure that access checks your work after you exit from that field. And if there's any problems, it'll let us know. But since there wasn't any, let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. So when I come up here and click on the run button, it opens up the parameter that says, okay, enter a customer name. Oh, all right. Well, let's see. Disneyco. Dot. Hit the enter key and hey, there we go. Isn't that fun? Now you're probably thinking at this point, what's the difference? If I just go ahead and go back to the design view, I can just simply type in the name down the criteria field right there. But here's where it gets fun. So instead of doing that, because I have it set up as a parameter query, if I want to rerun the query, but this time with a different name, I don't have to go back to the design view. I just need to rerun it by, here's the shortcut keys, Shift F9. Oh, it brings it back. Okay, go ahead and type in a customer name. We'll do fall cleaning, hit enter. Oh, that's fun. Better yet, let's go ahead and hit the F5 key. Oh, that works as well. That's nice. Okay, let's go ahead and put in Disney CO, period, hit enter, and it brings it up. Now, the problem that you could be running into is that if you don't know the exact spelling of the name, the customer name, because if you don't enter it in exactly as it's spelled, you won't get the results. So if I hit F5 and I'm like, Diz ni co hit enter, I get zero. Got to have a little dot at the end. So let's go ahead and go back to the design view and let's tweak this. We'll make it a little bit easier on the front end user when they run this parameter query. So let's go ahead and click in the criteria field and to change it, I don't have much room. So let's go ahead and right click and zoom in on that field so it opens up so I can see more of it. And let's do this. Let's go ahead and click at the beginning and type in like. And then the statement, instead of entering in the customer name, how about if we just say enter in the first couple letters of the customer name? Enter. Let's go ahead and delete that. So if they know the first couple letters, we'll do the rest. Enter in first couple letters of name. And then we want to click at the end of it or outside of the closed square brackets and type in ampersand and the asterisk. The ampersand ties the wildcard to the parameter here. So we want to make sure that whatever they type in here, we have a wildcard after it. That means, hey, anything can come after the first couple of letters, whatever they type, because it's wild. It could be anything. And then go ahead and click okie dokie, hit the tab key to make sure that once we exit, it checks our work. So far it checks out. Let's go ahead and run it. Come up here, click on the view button, or you can do run, doesn't matter. So it says enter in the first couple letters. Okay, it's D I Z N. Hit enter. There we go. Oh, that's great. How about if we do something a bit more? Let's go back to the design view and change this. Right click on it to zoom so we can see it. How about if we say just enter in a few letters? As long as it's within the uh, customer name, it'll find it because maybe they don't remember the first couple letters of every single name. So go ahead and shake this up. Let's click at the beginning, right after the like, but before the first square bracket there. And let's go ahead and do asterisk and then ampersand. So we got a wild card that's tied to using the ampersand to the parameter. So this is saying, with it being wild, doesn't matter what comes before the letters they type in. And then the wild card at the end, doesn't matter what comes after it, just something, you know, in between. So we could say, well, we better change this here. So let's go ahead and change this and we'll say enter a few letters 
of customer name. Okie dokie, hit the tab key, see if it likes it. Let's go ahead and run it. First, enter a few letters of customer name. Let's see, N-E-Y. What's that going to bring up? Hit enter. Well, there we go. N-E-Y is in Disney Company. Yay! Wait, I'm not done yet. Let's go back to the design view. Because what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and, and add the sales date. Double click on that. How does that work with dates? Well, you could enter a parameter here that says enter a date where it has to meet both conditions here before it pulls up the record. So, you know, it's got to type in the company name or a few letters and then also a date. But let's do something like a between date, like the start date and the end date. So when we enter in a customer name, the sales date could be between like August 1st and October the 31st for that customer and see if we have any books that we sold to that customer during that time period. So to go ahead and enter in our parameter query, well, let me go ahead and right click on that to open up the cell so we can see more here. And let's do between, open square brackets, enter a start date, colon, and then close square brackets. You don't have to put in the colon. That's not part of the coding because it's within the square brackets, but that's what I'm doing here. And then we'll type in AND because it's got to meet this other condition. In other words, they have to enter in a start date and an end date. So let's go ahead and do close square brackets, enter an end date, colon, and then close square brackets. Let's go ahead and click okie dokie. Hit the tab key to make sure it accepts it. Come up here, click on the run button, which by the way, when you're in the design view, the F5 key won't work. Let me click cancel. You hit F5, won't work. Shift F9 doesn't work. You have to be in the data sheet view to rerun the query in order for it to work. So when we start off in the design view, we got to give it a nudge and then we can go ahead and use it after the shortcut keys. So click run. Let's see, enter a few letters. I think GH is for ghost hunters. Hit enter. And then it goes, okay, enter a start date. Let's see, August 1st, 8 slash 1 slash 08, hit enter. And then the end date, 10 slash 31 slash 08, hit enter. And hey, we found something. We did have the customer ghost hunters buy some books between these dates, August 1st and October the 31st. As opposed to, let me go ahead and right click, and go to the design view. Let me just go ahead and get rid of the dates. And then go ahead and click on the run button and type in GH, hit enter. We had four records, now we have nine. So it did capture the books that they bought between those two dates, August 1st and October 31st. And what wasn't between those dates were these records right here. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.